Studio design is one of the most important aspects of audio production. Almost everything we do in the course of production is based on what we hear coming through the studio monitors in the main workspace or control room. That environment really needs to be optimized for presenting the audio as cleanly and accurately as possible, without any interference or coloration that could prevent the engineer and mixer from hearing exactly what's actually in the recordings and making the best decisions as to how to treat them, both from the technical or corrective and the creative standpoint. This is especially critical for mixing. How could you be sure that a mix would translate well on other playback systems if you couldn't even trust what you were hearing on your own? And yet, despite the importance of this aspect of production, the design and setup of many smaller music spaces, project rooms and home studios, often gets short shrift. It's easy enough, especially for somewhat less technical, more musical producers and small studio owners, to set up a music room for logistical convenience with a set of favorite speakers and be done with it without giving much further consideration to the potential sound-related pitfalls that may await. Many people are largely unfamiliar with the problems that most small rooms tend to present. After all, not everyone's an expert on the physics of sound. And it may not be immediately apparent whether a set of speakers that generally sounds good for playback is truly suitable for the more demanding task of monitoring during recording, and especially mixing and mastering. When it comes to putting together a small studio, Installing all the gear and arranging the room and speakers for reliable monitoring and efficient workflow, there are a number of ways a new studio owner or designer can slip up. So it's not surprising that he may make a few mistakes while organizing the studio space. Specific choices when it comes to setting up the room and monitors that might not prove the most optimal or reliable environment for recording and especially mixing. This series of courses, 10 Mistakes or 10 Don'ts of Various Production Activities, focuses on some of those things, common and sometimes less common aspects of production that it would probably be best to avoid. This course, of course, covers 10 things to watch out for when it comes to studio design. It presents a series of suggested don'ts, mistakes or just less effective choices, along with suggestions for solutions to problems and alternative approaches that might contribute to a more effective studio environment. The course assumes a basic familiarity with studio design and setup, but just to be thorough, I'll do a very brief review of some of the basic technical concepts before jumping into the 10 don'ts themselves. Typical small rooms share a number of potential audio problems that can significantly color the sound the engineer and mixer hears, enough to lead him astray when it comes to critical decision making during recording, mixing, and mastering. These issues include room modes, reflections, ambience, and leakage, all of which usually need to be addressed, at least to whatever degree possible, to ensure that the listening environment allows the mixer to hear what's actually in the recording and doesn't impose its own distinctive sonic signature on everything, which can make it virtually impossible to mix and master with the confidence that your efforts will sound as expected to other eventual listeners on other playback systems. Room modes, or standing waves, create an uneven bass response in the room which should be at least mapped out with the problem spots avoided, and at best treated acoustically for a more even balance. Reflection and general ambience can cloud the sound so the mixer doesn't know how much artificial reverb should or shouldn't be applied, and can be especially problematic when utilizing mixing moves that involve psychoacoustic perception, like panning and doubling. And of course, unwanted sound leakage can stop a recording dead in its tracks and get in the way of just about every aspect of production. When it comes to the monitors, well, they need to be more than just good sounding speakers. They need to be as neutral as possible in terms of tonal balance, and their placement and arrangement can be critical to getting the best out of even a suitable speaker pair. Proper response, distance, angle, and mounting all contribute to the monitor's effectiveness, along with best practices when it comes to issues like monitoring level. I'll be covering all these issues and concerns as I look at the various potential mistakes and don'ts that are likely to come up when setting up a small studio for recording and mixing. So, with that brief rundown out of the way, let's start taking a look at some of those things to watch out for when it comes to studio design.